feeling to have, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate y'all coming today. Wow. Come on in the house. Well, how many yesterday you made it out to the big wedding? Can I see your hands? Wow. Thank you so much for being there. How many watched that wedding online? Some of you saw it online. That's another big crowd. Thank you. If you didn't get a chance, you can go and watch that wedding yesterday online. And it's, you'll see, you'll see. It'll be worth your while. It'll be worth your while. It'll, uh, it'll encourage your heart a little bit about about God's Word and about how God still, He's still in the marriage business, you know? Praise the Lord. Well, come on in. We'll tell you a little bit later, but if you're a young family, a family with children, young family with smaller children or teenagers, we have an event today at Marco's Pizza for young families right after church. And Marco's has opened up to young families from our church today, and we're going to feed them. With the crazy economy, we're going to feed some young families today, amen? And all their children. And uh, so that'll help them. That'll help them. They'll get to go out to eat with us today. So that's happening right after church today if you're a young family, okay? Or if you, have, you might have a young family that's not here, but just tell them to come over to Marco's and they can eat with us today for free. Praise the Lord. Amen. Here we go. How you doing? How's your voice, son? About to wear out on you? Yeah, you're doing it. You're doing it. You're carrying the load. Both of you. Both of you carrying the load today. I appreciate you. All righty, Mr. Chris Brooks will be back with us in just a moment. Let's stand on our feet. Let's go, guys. Let's have church this morning. Amen. Well, my son got married yesterday, Mitch, who's always here in the middle, and he married Mallory. Now it's Mr. and Mrs. Mitchell and Mallory Clark. Let's thank the Lord for them. They might be watching. Who knows? Amen. Praise the Lord. What's an incredible wedding, food galore. Matter of fact, did anybody have wedding cake this morning outside? Yeah, there's wedding cake out there, and there's donuts and all that kind of stuff, but we have donuts every week, but not wedding cake. But anyway. But uh, had a great day yesterday. Uh, I'm shot, okay? I did the wedding, but there's a lot before the wedding. And then the wedding's bigger after the wedding. We had one reception here, and it was huge. And then there's another reception at a country club. And I had to go. (laughs) And I ate like a pig. And I talked to everybody under the sun. So I'm shot. How many feel sorry for me? Anyone? Anyone feel sorry for me? Anyway. I left the house this morning without a belt on. It's a good thing I'm fat. I'm just saying. How many of you don't need a belt like me? You like me, you don't need a belt anymore. Amen. The belt's for looks, right? Anyway, come on. Glad you're here. If it's your first time, I'm Pastor Year. You're already wondering what have I got myself into, but it's okay. It's okay. I tell people, can you imagine how welcome you must feel if they allow me to be the preacher here? Come on. We started this church 21, almost 22 years ago in my house. And we're a small group of people meeting together that I preached at the high school for 12 and a half years. And when you come today, if you're new, everything you see was, took, took a while to build it, but we didn't borrow a dime. We stayed put where we were and God blessed us. And so everything you see is debt free. And I can, we can run a church here on three offerings a month. That's what we do. And the fourth one is today, the fourth one. And that goes to the future, to the future. So anything that's given today will help us build a future classroom. It's, it's the plans have been drawn up. Our architect was in the first service. Probably, I could say within the next year or so, we can see groundbreaking and get that going. We've, re- we've received about $1.3 million so far. $1.3 million. Amen. Come on. But it's going to be great. Prayer Garden has another big hospitality center in it that will help us uh, with larger crowds. And so it's going to be great. But anyway, just we're glad you're here today. You're part of a a really neat ministry. My brother Terry and his wife Portia is here. Can you say hello to my brother Terry? Wave at us, Terry. Welcome Terry and Portia today. He preached the first service 
And he, he would be good to do it again, but I'm going to preach the second service. But you do yourself well to go listen to his message online. How many heard his message this morning? Some of you? Isn't that the truth? Yeah. Wouldn't it be a good message to go? I heard several, several people came and talked to me, and it really helped them in their life. And it's, he's a, he's, he challenges you, but it'll be really good, very explan- explanatory to you. And so anyway, but I'm going to preach this message today, and uh, we're looking forward to a good time. Thank you, Mr. Joel Herring will lead us today with Miss Sherry and the band today. Can we tell Saltwater we love them today? Come on, you're, get ready. Get ready. I'm telling you. One of my all-time favorite songs is done by Sherry Frank, and she's going to do it right now. It's called, Let Me Tell You about my Jesus. Jesus. Let's go. Come Come on. Knock it out. Let's go. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus Do you feel that empty feeling? The shame's done all it's stealing You're desperate for some healing Let me tell you about my Jesus Well, He makes a way
That is a Sherry signature song right there. I mean, not only the vocals, but the, the smile and the body language. You got it. You got it. Because she's experienced it. She's, Jesus has helped her in her life and means the world to her. And she just loves opening up and letting it fly. Amen. We're going to switch gears a little bit on you. Another song, a little different tempo. And Mr. Joel Herring is going to lead this one out. It's called Reckless Love. And God, in this song, it says he fights for you. He fights for you. Isn't it funny how Satan tells us God's picking on us? He's going to hit us in the head with a bat. God's bad, you know. It's all a big lie. Let Joel sing the song with you, and you'll see a little bit of a glimpse of God and who he really is. It's called Reckless Love. Praise the Lord. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind.
know if you're going to tag that song or not, buddy. That's a beautiful song. Let's thank the Lord again. What a great song. A reckless love of God. Amen. Well, welcome again today. If it's again your first time, welcome today. I'm Pastor Gary and you at Fellowship Church. And uh, if you've been a couple of times, hopefully now you're starting to get an idea of who we are. We love Jesus and we love people. Would you say that with me? We love and we love and I try to remind you why I didn't when we started the church. Why didn't you say we love God? Well, Jesus is God. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. But we're told to put our faith and our trust in Jesus. Believe on the name of the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved. And uh, nowadays you can say you love God. And what is that anymore? But when you say Jesus, we got you. You hear me or not? That's God's only son. And so we're here today to love him with all our heart, soul, and mind. And we're here to love each other as ourselves. Amen. So that's who we are. That's where you've come today. Also, something I like to do is I like to be me. Me. You know how long it took me to be me? I get up on a stage and I'm going to perform. But to be me. Me with the good, me with the bad. That's who I am. Okay? And I'm, I'm on a journey just like you are. And I, I need the Lord just like you do. And I say it often, a lot of you are better than me. You're further down the road or maybe you've been more obedient than I've been. What's the point? We're both on that road. We're both headed that way. Amen? And we need His help. So we're not here for you to be like me. We're here for you to, to be like Jesus. He's high and lifted up. Amen? And we're going to get down at his feet. We're going to love him and worship him. So that's where you are today. If you're hurting today, it's okay. You can come here with hurt. How many would say in your life you've experienced some serious hurt? Can I see some hands? Just write some serious hurt in your life. That's good for these others maybe that are hurting today. You're in a room where people have hurt or are hurting. But we're not going to sit here for an hour and a half and whine about it. We're going to get us some help from the Lord today. Amen? Come on. But if you need to sit there and be quiet, that's okay. Hey, you, you matter to us today. Amen? Thank you so much for being here. Let's pray together. Lord, we love you because you first loved us. And Lord, it's good to have my brother and his wife here today. But Lord, it's good to have particularly my brother because we grew up at 109 River Road in Rockingham. We know what it was to not have a home that loved God, loved Jesus. We didn't know anything about that. Nothing. But, Lord, you changed all that. You changed all that with our, with our drunk mama hearing Billy Graham on TV. And it changed the trajectory, certainly of my life, but of our whole family's life. Lord, you're a God of grace. 
I'm glad you're a God that comes to the drunk woman's home and knocks on the drunk woman's heart. Lord, we want to be that kind of church that we're not better than folk. Would you hit on, would you hit on our door today, Lord? <laughs> would you knock on our door today? You stand there, you say, and you knock. I pray we'll open that door. I pray many today will receive you as their Lord and their Savior today. They'll reject that going to church will get you to heaven. They'll reject every other way but you, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's our prayer. We don't want to have church without you. What a waste of time that would be. We want you in our midst. Speak to our heart. Help us with our pride. Just help us, Lord, to be able to say yes to you today. Whatever it is you're, you're tugging at our heart, help us get closer to you and say, wow, I'm better than I came. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Be seated if you would. Thank you so much. Boy, this man worked his tail off. Are you going to take a couple of days off? Would you, would you like to take one off? It'd be nice, but it's okay. We got stuff going on. We got stuff going on. We got light men coming. We got light men coming. Light men coming. People are going to do some lights. Light are, are, they weigh, are they don't weigh much? Well, that's true. No, I, I don't know. I don't know. Light, light men. Moment. Light men. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here at Fellowship. We're just so glad you're here. If today's your first time here, please do us a favor and fill out that guest registry that's right there in your worship guide that you got when you walked in the door this morning. Or you can go out to the Welcome Center right afterwards and they'll give you a little gift bag out there. We promise not to bother you. We just want to send you a note of thanks for being here and a postcard whenever a big event is going on here at the church. So uh, if you don't mind doing that, please do so. And good morning, everyone online. Thank you all so very much for tuning in with us. Uh, no matter where you're at in the world, we just love and appreciate you. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen and watch today. Uh, send us a Facebook message also or a, um, an email. And with the same info, we'd love to get you on that list and stay in touch with you as well. Today, right after this service, we're meeting over at Marco's Pizza. Uh, we'd love for all the young families to come out with kids. Come on out if you got your children with you. you got grandkids you brought today. We'd love for the kids to all get together, have some fun, make some new friends. Parents get together, make some new friends, some new connections here at the church. Uh, we just would love, love, love to fill up that Marco's. we got a bunch of pizzas ordered already. We'd love to order, have to order more. Um, it's all for free today. We just want a chance to love on you, show you how much you matter to us, and also so that you all can make some really good connections at the church. So come on out today right after this service. Just head straight to Marco's for some free lunch and basically all-you-can-eat pizza. And I know some of you all can do some damage, so we're ready for you. Young families. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And also for our middle school kids, today we are going to be having at the Heegs home, their middle school group is meeting together. Uh, we just encourage you to come on out, invite your neighbor uh, that's a middle school age, invite them to this. If you have one, of course, in the house, bring them by. Also at the Welcome Center, there's little cards for you to grab out there so that you can call the family, the Heegs, Adam and Jen. They're incredible folks. They've been a part of our ministry here for over eight years. We trust them. We believe in them. They're going to te teach these kids all about Jesus. They're going to get into scriptures with them. They're going to let these kids kids know how much they matter and I mean we can as parents and grandparents tell them but the world's telling them the opposite and sometimes it's good to hear from somebody you don't know quite so well how much you matter how much you're loved so please encourage a kid to come on out and it will be 100% worth their time they're going to feed them love on them and uh, we wouldn't be sending them to someone's home if we didn't trust these folks they're good people we believe in them and it's a really really great thing for these kids to be a part of we have lots of Bible studies here at Fellowship Church. Please check them out. They're, they're listed on your worship guide. Uh, you can give us a call at the office if you have any questions. We'd love to fill you in. But please plug in the one. It's just a great chance to get into God's Word and, again, make some really great friends here at the church. Every Wednesday, Fellowship Recovery meets right here at this church. Uh, it's meeting at 6 o'clock out in the foyer for an incredible meal before they come in here for, for music, time in God's Word, uh, small group time. And it's just an incredible chance for you to get together with other believers, to get over your hurts, your hang-ups, any struggles you might have going on in your life. They want to come alongside you in love, not in judgment, and they want you to get as close to Jesus as possible so you can overcome these struggles. So that's every Wednesday right here at the church. And at 4 o'clock every Wednesday, we have our grief share group that meets. 
This is for anybody that's going through that profound pain of a loss of a loved one. I encourage you to come on out. Get some support. Get some love here at the church. You don't have to go through this alone. Uh, these are folks that are at different stages of, of, of going through it themselves, so many of them. You, and you just don't have to do it alone. Come on out on a Wednesday at 4 o'clock. If you know somebody who's struggling, invite them. It's all, we just would love for you to, you to be a part of this incredible group of people every Wednesday at 4 o'clock here at the church. Men's prayer breakfast is going to be this Saturday. We're going to actually set up right in the foyer. We have a special guest speaker. He's, he, we're going to get him a microphone and all that good stuff. It's going to be a great, great time, a free breakfast this coming Saturday at 8 o'clock right here at the church in the foyer. Um, it's just an awesome, awesome chance for us to get together. It takes about an hour. We're out of here at 9 o'clock, guys. And it's just a really incredible breakfast made for you by folks in our church that love you. And the breakfast is top notch. And the, the word is going to be incredible this week. We just really, really encourage you to come on out this coming Saturday. Chris Golden will be here next Sunday. On your way out, you're going to need a little postcard so you can invite somebody. Chris Golden is a former drummer of the Oak Ridge Boys. He comes up here. The guy's a singer-songwriter. If you've heard him before, you know you want to come back and hear him again. If you haven't, invite your neighbor, invite a friend. It's well worth getting him in the door for an incredible concert. Uh, Pastor Gary, I think, will be uh, giving a, a short word as well. So it's going to be an incredible weekend next weekend. Please come on back and uh, also invite somebody. It's really going to be an awesome, awesome weekend next weekend. Fishers of Men on the, on the 9th, which is a Saturday, is going to be having a, an awesome co-ed group get together. We're going to have Mr. Pete King talking about discipleship. And Jeff Stymack, he's going to be talking about evangelism. It's going to be about a two-hour time in the morning from 8 to about 10 o'clock on this day. We ask you to sign up on your way out, though, everybody. Because we want to have enough food for everybody. They're going to get donuts and coffee and all that good stuff. It's a great, again, it's a great chance for you to learn how to, to evangelize and also how to raise somebody up in Jesus, help them to become a better disciple of Jesus. So come on out on this. It's going to be a great, great time together. I just encourage you to sign up, please. And also, we need candy. We need candy, lots of candy. If you all have been here for an egg hunt in the past, you know there's thousands of people that come out for this awesome event. We want to sugar these kids up, send them home so the parents don't forget us. They may cuss us that first day, but they're going to leave here feeling loved. Because of the candy, yes, but also because we're going to ask you all to help with this too in a, in a, few, in a week or so. But it's going to be a great chance to reach this community. We're getting ready to hand out cards at, at every school in the area. Every kid's going to go home with a card, thousands of cards, thousands of kids. They're all going to come here. It's our chance to love and to reach out to these families that may not come here otherwise. So please help us out. Next week, couple of weeks, bring some candy. When you see it on sale, grab a bag or two. You can bring it to the office or right here to the church. We, thank you. Pardon me, my allergies drive me crazy too, everybody. Um, and also our radio station, 91.3, around on FM dial. Pastor Gary is on nearly every day of the week. Please check him out on the radio. We just encourage you to listen there as well. And also, this is Our Town. We thank you for wearing the shirts, the hats, putting those bumper stickers on your car. It really does point people here to, to Fellowship Church, and then we get to point them to Jesus. So please, help us out with that. You may be a part of someone's testimony and never even know it just by wearing a shirt to Walmart. Simple as that. There are five bucks out there. You can wear a hat for five bucks. If you don't have the cash, we'll give them to you. Just please wear the shirt. Uh, I think next week or maybe the week after, we're going to start promoting our Jesus is Risen shirts. Just got a bunch of those in. Easter's coming around the corner, so we'll be getting some new shirts here real soon. And also, we thank you for giving at Fellowship Church. We are a debt-free ministry because of you. Give2FC.com, really easy way to give online. One-time gift, weekly, monthly, however you'd like to do that. Uh, many of you are doing it already, and we thank you so much for that. And also, that P.O. Box, we thank you for all of you folks that are, are north during the uh, summer months that you send notes of encouragement. Many of you give through that P.O. Box. We thank you also for that as well. We love and appreciate you. God bless you. Have a great, great rest of your day. And don't forget about Marcos if you have children. Wow, as they get set, they've got a beautiful song for you this morning. Sherry's going to do a special number with Joel and the team's help. But Chris Golden next week, Chris is my friend. Uh, his father started the Oak Ridge Boys. He's the one with the long beard when you see the Oak Ridge Boys. And he's still singing with them and doing. And, uh, but I met Chris uh, because he was hurting. And someone recommended me to him and him to me. Because I know what hurt is. I know what pain feels like. 
And he was going through a deep time in his life, and he called me, and him and I must have chatted for an hour or so on the phone. And uh, I think I helped him. And uh, then he and I were able to meet, and I've had him here. I love, I try to have him back every year. I love seeing him. He's my friend. And he'll come and sit right there on a stool, play the guitar. He'll play the piano. Many of the songs he's written, and uh, he, he's always just a great delight. Amen? So that's next week. We look forward to it. Amen? Thank you for this special song. Sherry, introduce it. Well, you requested it. <laughs> I told first service at the rehearsal dinner, I sat with Gary and Kim and their kids, Terry and Portia, and Larry and Karen. <laughs> And it was an interesting night. <laughs> we never ran out of stuff to talk about. But you said, hey, this will go really great with the message. And I don't know what you're going to preach on yet, but I heard the first one. And I'm telling you, I love the way that he pulls stuff together that I'm like, wow, I never thought of it that way. And you do that, too. You guys are just cut from the same cloth as much as you hate me saying that. <laughs> Maybe a little, maybe a little. <laughs> but you know what? You guys both embody that spirit of God did it. God in me, God through me. And don't look at me, look at him. And I just love that because the voices in our head and the, the trauma of our past, anyone that knows, both of you knows that you haven't had an easy life. I don't think many of us have had an easy life. But God takes all of those things, and he, there's nothing he can't put in the past. There's nothing he can't use. And he says that you're special, and you're valued, and you're worth it. And don't worry about that stuff, because I'm going to use it. I'm going to turn a mess into message. And I say that you're loved, and I'm going to lift you up. So... This song, just stay focused on him. When you're in that pit, when you're feeling that, he's really the only opinion that matters.
That was worth the ride this morning to church. <laughs> Come on, girl. That was great. Jump up on your feet with me one more time. Fantastic. I heard that twice. Liked it better the second time even. No, it was all good. It was all good. It was fantastic. Thank you. What a message in song. Amen. Thank you for giving to the Lord's work. And we'll do that in just a little bit after this song. But uh, Joel's going to lead us out on this one. And it's... Uh, the Lord's Prayer, and it's, uh, I used to sing a version with Miss Karen back in the day, the Lord's Prayer. You and I have done that one, the old version. This is a little different, but it's got the great words of the Lord's Prayer, and uh, it's, it's going to be a blessing. Thank you, Joel. Appreciate it. Oh 
Amen, guys. Thank you. Amen. Remain standing with me. Thank you, guys. Man, y'all worked so hard at the wedding yesterday. Gave your heart since really what, Friday, and you met throughout the week, and just appreciate all your hard work, man. You made it. You made it special. You were you were there for Mitch and Mallory. We appreciate you, man. God bless you guys. We love you. Amen. Thank you for giving to the Lord's work today, Terry. Come on up and pray with us this morning. Pray for the offer. Just jump up on stage, buddy. Come on. Yeah. You, jump, brother. You can jump. Anyway. How many have never met my brother Terry ever? Can I see your hands? A lot of you. Wow. Listen to the first message. If you get a chance, you'll get to know him, and you'll get to see that how, much, how much different we are. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He was ugly when he had hair. <laughs> I, no, I love my brother. I love my brother. No, I know you we love We know him. that. We know that. If you don't, you will know if you hang around me long enough. Absolutely. I could be his poster child, okay? Amen, amen. I appreciate it. brother. Yeah, and I love him. I think it's good for the church. Sure. For, for years sure and years. Sure it is, yeah. Years and years to see this is, uh, this is what God intends in family. He intends a brother to love a brother and, uh, and to help a brother. Guilty. Yeah, boom. Guilty. <laughs> okay, man. But anyway, thank you for giving to the Lord's yes, work. Thank and you. Uh, thank you. Everything you give today will go to that uh, new wing. It's not just children's wings. Lots of classrooms, uh, hospitality area, prayer garden. And it's not cheap, guys. But, uh, but when you do it debt-free, there's no interest. Amen? Yay. Come on. And we'll do it in God's Yay. time. God's time. Yeah, not my time. Good. Amen? But thank you for good. giving. If you can give good. cheerfully, we'll receive your gift. If for some reason you can't give it cheerfully, we want you to hang on to that. Not trying sure. to be ugly. But we just want all the gifts that go... One day when that thing's built, we can say people who loved you gave this money, who nice. believed, nice. you know. Love, so love so help us today if you can, and we'll see what we do. Amen? Here you go. Come on. Here we go. Father, thank you for, for being our God. You're high and holy, and we just ain't. We're not. We're at your feet. That's where we are. We're at your feet, and we're humbled that we can even call you Father. For all the mess we've had in our life. And you've washed it as far as the east is from the west. Thank you, Thank you for that. You buried it in the sea of forgetfulness. Mm. So we're happy today that we know the Christ. The only son of the true and living God. We know him as savior. Mm. For the penalty he paid that he didn't have to pay. Amen. And he didn't know it. No. It's on us. So you do something today, and we're going to be a long time talking about it. We want you here. We want you to meet with us. We want you to do something that we can walk away knowing we were with the Lord Jesus Christ today. So what you give, you give with a happy heart in Jesus' name. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, brother man. Thank you. Appreciate you. Love you. Hey, you watching online, thank you so much for giving as well. And uh, it, it amazes me and uh, our church how that you support us, and we appreciate it. If you can give cheerfully, we'll receive it. We appreciate it. But thank you so much. Send us a note of encouragement if you could. And uh, tell us, uh, I don't know, just give us a blessing. Maybe give us a scripture verse. Give me a shout out. I'll read it in about oh, an hour or so. Okay? God bless you. Thank you.
This is a high song. I don't know if I can do it. And I sing because I'm happy. And I sing because I am free. Oh, that was rough. For his eye is on the sparrow. I got the low notes. And I know he watches me. I got a bad cold, so I should have never tried. Let's thank the Lord for Miss Karen. That'll humble you. Amen. Come on. Let's go to God's Word this morning and see what we can find with Roger the Dodger Johnson back there. And uh, I'd like to give a real, real thank you to Roger and Alex and all the staff and everybody that just went overboard this past week for the wedding and then we planned for church. There's a lot of work. Can we just thank them for everything they do? I tell you what, they make church sort of fun. Now, if you don't like it, if you're not having a good time here, to be honest with you, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> there really is. I mean, you know, or if, or if you come in and you just, well, we did it this way up north. Now, we'll tolerate that about three times. And then I'll tell you, 75 goes straight back north. <laughs> and 95 will go that way, too, if you try hard. No, we just want you to be happy. We want to be in a place where we're serving the Lord and not looking over down at, you know, the way they do it this way and do it that way. Well, guess what? I'm sorry. We like us. Can you say that out loud? We like. We like us. And I have the same staff I've had for 21 years. Yeah, thank the Lord for that. You go find that somewhere. Amen. And the Lord's good to us. And our volunteers show up early and they stay late. And they do it happily. And we want you part of that. We want you part of the volunteer team and people serving the Lord. And you matter and you can do it. Amen. And uh, we want you to feel a part. Amen. Whether it's on a Sunday morning or helping on Wednesday night with the uh, Celebrate Recovery programs or the Bible studies or the kids things. And a lot of us are going to plug in and do something that my wife leads. She leads the big Easter egg extravaganza. And it's not just Easter eggs. It's, it's a carnival with homemade games, and it's hilarious, and it is fun, and uh, it'll be fantastic. She also does a fall festival. She does the big event for the kids, but we like to plug you in, get you volunteering. How many are you ready to go ahead and stuff some eggs? About 40,000 of them. Are y'all ready? I mean, we're going to do it. It's going to be crazy. Now, y'all going to do it. I don't do it. That drives me crazy. I can do a lot of other stuff, but I ain't doing that. But it is a lot of fun, and they'll feed you. It's going to be great. But thank you for serving. I want you to be involved. Let's go to the message. God has the best vision. This will be my last message in this series, and we're going to turn the page. And we're going to have Chris Golden next week, and then we're going to get our focus. Easter is early. We're going to start our focus on Christ and his life and his crucifixion and resurrection. And so... But today we'll finish up this series called God Has the Best Vision. Would you say some things with me? I'll have you helping me again today. I'm still winded, to be honest with you, from that wedding and uh, been having a bug. I got a bug, so I won't be kissing you, okay? I know it's disappointing, I know. But anyway, but no, but I've just been trying. I love to love on you. I love to hug and have your face next to my face because it gives me energy, it encourages my heart. But we better not today. But, but I'm a little bit under the weather. We'll see what we can do. Vision, say it with me. Vision is seeing what God sees. But vision is not being a kook. I saw this. I saw that. And we want to tell people. You know, I, God was with me last night and he did this. And we go to bragging. And a lot of the church is doing that today. That's not what I'm talking about. Got it? Yes or no? I ain't talking about kooky stuff. There's plenty in the Word of God and with common sense with the Word of God that you can see a whole lot better than you see. So I want to see as God sees it. We've been laying the foundation for several weeks now on what I mean. See, God sees things you and I don't. And His thoughts are not our thoughts. He's holy, holy, holy. We ain't, ain't, ain't. 
And see, stuff doesn't bother him. Matter of fact, the Bible says, the Lord sits in the heavens and laughs. That's good for you to know. When your sky is falling, his ain't. And so, having God's vision according to the word of God, what I'm feeling and thinking is, is seeing as God sees. Because all I can see is the crap sometimes. And that's not bad. Some, we need to see it. You can't work your way through it. If you, because, uh, because even church folks are, have you wished it away? No, it's called work. Sometimes it's called forgiveness. A lot of times it's called repentance. And getting right with God. But it takes work. Not wishing it away. But God has something for us. His way is different than my way. His plan is to use me. But what if this happens? He can still use you. What if you ran your life off the rails? Am I no good anymore? You return to the Lord. And you'll have a story of repentance and restoration. And God can use every one of us. Here's what God says in his word. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways, says the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. That's one of my favorite verses. How, how many like that verse? I'm pretty good. Sometimes I'll say that, and those are verses that you need to remember, memorize, write them down, stick them on the fridge, put it on your phone screen as a screensaver, so every time you turn your phone on, there it is. You do that with a lot of scriptures. You don't have to stay dumb your whole life. I'm from Rockingham. I didn't know anything about the Bible, did I, Terry? Boy, he said that quick. <laughs> we didn't. The point is, if I can do it, if I can memorize scripture, and I did it the old-fashioned way on three-by-five cards, and I'd stick them in my glove compartment box, I'd stick them in my pocket, and I just started having scripture. And the scripture in me got some of the hellraiser out of me. Not all of it. Still a work in progress. But I'm just saying, these are incredible scriptures. Here's another one. Here's another one. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. I love both of these verses because they both says the Lord. Amen. That ain't my opinion. That's what he said. I know my thoughts toward you, says the Lord. What kind of thoughts you got towards me? Thoughts of what? Peace and not of what? Evil. To give you an expected end or to give you hope. That word expected end is a confident expectation or the word is hope. That's what God has for my life. So we want to see this hope. Lord, I want to know your thoughts because life can be hard and messy and hurt and tough and challenging. Would you help me, Lord? Here's another one, another one of my favorites. I could just do this, sit with people and have favorite verses. The thief, Satan, the adversary, the devil, the liar, the wicked one, he comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy but who was saying this? Jesus himself. He said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So those three scriptures, passages, I sound like I'm a different voice. That's crazy. I hear myself echoing. But anyway, let's go back to the message. Uh, those three scriptures Tell us there's another way to see things. That's what those three scriptures said. Because our mind, in the natural man, we see I'm bad, I'm no good, I can't make it, I'm alone, I was left, I've abandoned, I'm hurt, I'm dead in the water, I ain't got a dog's chance. But those verses tell me, wait a minute. Yeah, that's true, a lot of the stuff is true. But there's another way. There's another way. There's a way out. There's a way up. 
That's what I want to see. The Bible says the natural man, we've already used this scripture in the series, the natural man, that means a man without Christ or a woman without Christ, a person who they can be brilliant, they can be financially smartest people on the planet, they can have education, but without Christ you can only see what you can see. The natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God. And that's the problem with so much of the church. We rely on ourselves. We're self-reliant. People like me are the worst. We grew up with maybe a, a personality. And maybe we were good at sports and smart in school. I know that's hard to believe. I was all those things. And good looking. What? That's a recipe for disaster. It's a recipe for pride. It's a recipe for just staying in the natural your whole life because you've always been able to make decisions and get yourself out of a jam. That's not God's plan. God's plan is for us to be able to have him in our life. We're made in his image and his likeness. He came to rescue us. He came to give us a a beautiful life here, and so we can be a light and a testimony to the world. And so this verse speaks of that. The natural man doesn't receive the things of the Spirit of God because they're what? They're foolishness unto him. So instead of in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, the foolish man says this, there was nothing, and nothing blew up and became something. And then that something Became you. How stupid. And they, and they teach that in our schools as being smart. And we're the idiots because we believe the Bible. No, we're not the idiots. We're the ones who believe God's word and we can receive truth from the spirit of Almighty God. And now we're finding out, and they still reject it. We're finding out that we each have individual f- fingerprints. We each have individual retina in our eye. We each have our own individual DNA. There's no two of us alike. But we just blew up and it all happened that way. You can live your life like that too. You can live your life with stuff happening and crap happening in your life. And you can keep doing it by yourself. And see if you don't run headlong into the ditch. There has to be a better way. And it's called vision. Y'all hear me or not? Have I lost you? Faith is the substance of things what? That word hope means a confident expectation. That's the same word that was over in Jeremiah. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the what? Evidence of things not seen. You mean, is it possible in my life to see things differently? Is it possible in my life to see the murder of my own mother as a positive? How can you say that, Gary? Well, I can't change what happened. So I could drink myself to death, shoot myself, be bitter the rest of my life. Or I could try to see where mama is now. And according to the word of God, she's with the Lord. And then I can... See that in the word of God it says we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. And I can remember her. And I can hear her voice still. You can make it. I love you. You belong to me. I'm proud of you. Smile when you sing. Look at the people when you preach. What I'm trying to say is, bad things happen, but we know all things work together for good to them who love God, 
to them who are the called according to his purpose. Is this too deep in the weeds with you today? There's got to be a way, man. Faith, faith. It's a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Would you say that with me? Faith is the confident expectation that what we hope for will actually happen. Say that one more time. Faith is the confident expectation that what we hope for will actually happen. Now, the problem is the church has turned that into like, you know, magic. If I just name it, claim it, I'll get it by Friday. And if you don't do it and you don't get it, then you must have not been right with God. They left this part out. You're an idiot. That's not biblical. That we're, it, back it up, please. It's the confident expectation that what we hope for, but that hope is our expectation is in Him. That hope is that our expectation is in his word. Our expectation is in his character. In who he is. And we just can't make stuff up. And life isn't as simple as a prayer and I'm out. It just doesn't make sense, guys. The, the Christian life, he wants to be involved in your life and sometimes we get it too quick and we lose the real meaning in what God really is planning for our life. And we can stare our way out. So anyway, we don't want to get kooky here. The confident expectation, say it with me, gives us what? Assurance about things we cannot see. How many have ever been in a situation you could see no way out? Can I see your hand? There's just no way out. How many thought it was over? I mean, really, life is like over for me. It sucks. Anybody? Gosh, I've got such easy living people out here. How many of you had a tragedy in your life? And not only do you still struggle, but you struggled so bad, you didn't know how you're going to go another day. Any hands on that one? I don't even know how I'm going to get up in the morning. Man! Well, God wants to help us. Can we say my mama's favorite verse? And we know all things work together for good to them who love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So, with all that said, let's say it this way. Real, out loud with me. Real faith is knowing that God causes everything to work together for good to those who are called according to his purpose for them. Can cancer be good? Sure it can. Cancer is good if you were lost and it helped you come to Christ. Had a lady in my office this week. You may be here. Whole family came to see me. Mama, a grandparents, grandchildren, and the parents of the kids came to see me. And she got a terrible disease. She had to have a major surgery they hardly ever do. But it, it caused her to hit her knees. It caused her to, to really come to Christ. And through her coming to the Lord and through this whole situation, her 14-year-old son was going to lose his mama. And so he started getting on his phone and trying to find an app. And how can I find somebody I can pray to? And is there a God out there? And dad who had not been in church or been faithful to the Lord, perhaps, many times, he came closer to the Lord. Well, in my office this week, I talked about her. Do you know Christ? She felt like she did. The father had been away, but he felt like he had a commitment to Christ now. The young son wasn't sure. Fourteen-year-old in my office. And he'd been searching. I said, well, you found him. His name is Jesus. And I can help you find him. He's right here with us. And, and the young man, it was no fight in the preacher. No, he just opened his, up, his heart up to Jesus. He said, just like we do. But I had him say it out loud in my office with me. And his parents even said it with him. 
And all three of them put their faith in Christ. Solid. Why? Why? Well, you thank the Lord. Come on. Praise the Lord. Come on. Why? Well, God can take the bad and he can bring good out of it. Yes or no? It happened this week. And not only that, they wanted to be baptized. Do you know how cold it was Wednesday? Like 42 degrees that morning or something? So I gave them an option. My pool, which won't that warm, but it was warmer than that ocean. And then the grandparents had a pool that was heated. And then I said, there's a third option. The ocean. The gulf. And of course, the 14-year-old wanted the gulf. <laughs> and so we, we went there on Wednesday and baptized all three of them in the name of Jesus. And all came about because of pain. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's how life works. It was great. Was I cold? Yes. But I tell you what I did. I went down there in the waves, and I was not going to get wet in the midsection. I just couldn't do it, man. I love the Lord, but I just couldn't do it, Lord. So I had water right about up to here. And I had the dad over here, the son right here, and I grabbed him by the shirt like this. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit baptized with Christ and I just dropped him <laughs> and he popped right up <laughs> and then we had the daddy ditto <laughs> did the same way but we were nicer to the mother <laughs> amen so anyway I know that's a side story but it's a true story it's a life changing story how many would say with me, and I, don't, I would appreciate it if you would be honest. How many would say, Pastor Gary, I've, I've, I'm struggling with a disease or I have struggled with a disease, and that disease, it did bring me closer to Christ. He calls it. Can I see some hands in the room just to respond to some people today? We believe all disease has to be removed. And some of you are going to argue with me. You ain't going to argue with me because you know where I stand on it. You're all going to die, okay? Do you know Christ? He's a great God and worthy of my praise even if I have a disease. He does heal. He doesn't heal everybody. And most healing that takes place, he uses doctors. What's wrong with saying that? Don't be crazy. Disease can bring me closer to the Lord. All things can work together for good. Hey, Larry, I love you. You know I love you, right? Would you say that your disease has brought you closer to the Lord? Has it given you opportunity to speak for Christ? <laughs> Able to lead his head doctor to salvation. How are you going to get to the head doctor? But he can help you. And I, you're one of my favorite people, by the way, you and your wife. And I bet you there's a whole lot of people that say the same thing that know you. Thank you. Thank you for suffering. But you're not giving up? No. We'll go when he tells us to go. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm not getting to the message, but we're doing pretty good with it. Even though I can't see it, I still believe that God is working. Say that out loud. Even though I can't see it, I still believe that God is working. I can't see it, but I believe he's working. Now, it might not work out the way I think, but that's okay. I just don't want to be left thinking it ain't going to work out. I don't have any hope. That's not the way to see. The way to see is the way God sees. Roger, you've gone techno on me, buddy. Look at that. Look at that. Double vision. You mean double vision can be good? I'm going to tell you right now, if you've got double vision and you go to an eye doctor, it's bad. I had double vision a few weeks ago. Double. So I went to the doctor and scared me to death. Later he told me, he said, in a year from now, you're not even going to remember it. I like that. 
At least I was going to lose my mind or something. I don't know what he was saying. But anyway, the point is, is that double vision is usually not good. There's several reasons for it, but it's normally not good. I want to tell you right now, this is good. This kind of double vision is good. It's seeing with eyes of what? See, the natural man, you can see with the one eye. Yeah. But God wants you to see with not only the natural eye, but the spiritual eye. And we can see a situation. This is the way it is. But it's amazing with what God's word and with faith, we can see it's going to be this way, though, too. No hope. Hope. Got it? I don't know the timing, how it all works out, but it does happen. Seeing with eyes of faith. Let's go, Raji. I'm really slow. I not only can see with eyes that are physical, but I can also see with eyes that are what? But I hate to tell you, there's some people that only see with eyes that are spiritual. Spiritual, 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 spiritual. And they have no relatability with the real world. It's like they walk on clouds. I'm a cloud walker. (laughs) Guys, you're supposed to be able to see with both. Physical and spiritual. We live in a world where lost people are. It sure would be nice if you could speak their language and understand where they're at and where they're coming from and not just jump over here to spiritual, 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 spiritual. This is all part of God's time and how he works. Without faith, say it with me. It's what? It's impossible to please him. You'll never be the Christian God has called you to be. If you only see with a natural eye. But he doesn't say throw your natural eye in the, in, the, in, the, in the trash can. So much of life is natural. But we can see spiritually. And that's what God wants us to do by faith. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. Say it with me. For he that comes to God must what? Must believe that he's what? He is. And that he's a what? He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. The problem with vision and double vision is we, all, we tell God what the reward is. See, I, 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 you know, I got to get my healing. I want this fixed. I want this amount of money. I'm not saying you can't give God suggestions. But I think ultimately, it's like Joel said, Father in heaven, your will be done. The biggest problem is lead me not into temptation because I'm a lunatic. Deliver me from evil, amen. But I'm not going to go about telling you how to make the end game of my life be. Does that make any sense? So double vision, double vision. When you can see your situation and also see God working in your situation. Would you say that out loud? What's double vision? It's when you can see your situation and you can see God working in your situation. Now, here's the problem. you got to be careful because you can see your situation and you can see your situation how you want it. And that might not be the way God wants it. You hear me or not? I'm frustrating some of you, ain't I? Well, grow up. This is the truth of God. Say it again, Roger. Back it up so we can just nail it. Double vision is when you can see your situation. But you can also, by faith, and his word, his word, have his word in you. Have his word in you. And you can see him working in your situation. Even when you're hurting, even when you're crying. When I was hurt years ago, my prayer was like this. Lord, I don't want to go through this crap and come out the same. But it was all crap. But something inside of me was saying, I don't want to come through this and be the same man. I want to be different. I want to be changed. I want to be better. God, help me, please. Would you help me? 
I didn't know he would use me to speak freely with people who are struggling with marriage and had been hurt real bad and abandoned. The Lord has used me. Bad things happen to me. I wouldn't change it because I've seen the Lord work through me and walk with me and talk with me in the garden. You know what I'm saying? It's beautiful. A couple of quick ones. We'll, we'll do it real quick. I'm late. Noah saw double. I, know, I can't give you all the stories of everybody in the book of Hebrews, but I just want to throw a few up. Noah saw double. How can, how can a flood be good? Going to kill everybody. Everybody going to drown. Be, by faith, Noah being warned of God of things not yet seen. He moved with what? Fear, obedience, reverence, belief in God. He prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world. He became an heir of, the right, of righteousness, which is by faith. Boy, you, you ain't never had as bad a day as Noah had. Rough man. Can you imagine the fear? A flood, a flood, a flood. You just like, my word, paralyzed. What happens when you are just paralyzed in life? You're just stopping. You can't, can't even move, man. Can I ever walk again? Can I ever move again? The flood. But he was delivered. He was delivered. Paralyzed. The flood, but he was delivered. That's what Noah teaches us. Go ahead, buddy. Let's do another one. Did y'all hear that one or not? Let's do another one. Abraham. He's in the book of Hebrews mentioned in this chapter. And I just picked a few of them. Abraham saw double. Abraham's a rich man, wealthy man. Had cat by the tail. Life was going great. God told him to move to another land. He ain't never been before. Don't know where he's going. And he ain't gonna, he's going to have nothing or whatever. I don't know. It's bad. Don't sound good to me. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out to a place which he should after received for an inheritance, he obeyed. He saw double. Say that last part with me. He went out not knowing where he was going. Women, ladies, can I ask you a question? Does that, does that bother y'all sometimes when your husband comes up with a plan or something like that? And you can't see the plan, and he goes ahead and moves on with the plan. How many have ever had that problem in a marriage? Can I see some hands? Well, that was most of the women. Women like security. Don't mess with my house. If we move in, we need to make sure we got another place that we go move to. Schools, all that matters, right? Husband like, we moving. That right there can cause problems. By faith, he sojourned in a land of promise. That's a nice way to put it. In a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city, there's that vision, which hath foundations, whose builder and maker was God. Abraham, how did you do on your journey? You were called to go out. What did that make you feel like? It made me feel displaced. When you're displaced, probably a lot of marriages have ended because of this. Not good. You can feel like you're, you don't belong. I'm, I'm, I'm a fish out of water. How many felt like that when you moved to Florida? Can I see some hands? Be honest. I moved to Florida. Oh, it's the sunshine and all that, but it ain't your mom, it ain't your dad, it ain't your children, it ain't your grandchildren, it ain't the church you went to. Now you would crazy me. You can feel displaced. Abraham, he could look at his past, and that's what we can do with vision in the natural. We can just look at where we were, what I had, I'm left behind. You're not mad at me, are you, buddy? Hey, hey. <laughs> Amen. Hey, Dan, Dan, you're not mad at me, are you? <laughs> what did he say? Too much coffee. Don't you love a church with real people? Come on. Let's finish the message. 
Guys with vision, you can only have physical vision and look at what you've left behind, but you can also have future vision and see what lies ahead. That's what I'm talking about with vision. Have I lost you today? We are told that these are examples for us to follow. Noah, Abraham, and by the way, every one of them were sinners. You can find sin in every one of their lives. It's not about you being perfect. We want to live for the Lord. We want to do the right thing. But it's not realistic that you're just going to skate on home without issues. Sarah, talk about crazy. She saw double. What was she, 75 years old, going to have a kid? And what did she do? She what? Laughed. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. Let you think about that. And was delivered of a child when she was past age. That means old as the hills. Because she judged him what? Faithful who had what? So Sarah, what can you teach us? Well, I felt inadequate. I couldn't have a child. That was my life. That's the way I see my life. And I lived in a culture where because I couldn't have a child, I was nobody. I had the curse of God on me. I was no good. Sarah, can you help us today? Because many of us feel inadequate, like we don't measure up. And maybe we do have struggles in natural struggles. And it's reality that these struggles are there. Can I still see Gary somehow out 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 of this mess? Well, her barrenness caused her to feel that way. How did she get her adequacy? How did she feel more than enough? How could she make it through it? God's what? Are you understanding double vision better? Let's look at another one. Moses. He saw double. Big story of Moses' life, but we'll just hit a little bit of it. By What Hebrew says, by faith Moses, when he was come to years, when he was grown man, He became his own man. He refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter anymore. He realized he was not their seed. But he was the people who were being persecuted, the slaves. Those were his people. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt that he had. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. So by faith, he what? He forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. Say it with me. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Every one of these that are mentioned in Hebrews, at least most of them, has a lot to do with how they saw. Y'all hear me or not? Quit saying somebody else has it better than you. That's a whiner. That's all a whiner does. Ah, they just got it easy. You have no idea how much pain is in this room. You want to get better? Do it this way. This is God's way. Good stuff. So Moses was conflicted for sure, wasn't he? You ever been conflicted which way to go, what to do, which way to turn, what am I going to do? And just in the physical, you can just see one way and only one way. But with the spiritual eyes, you can see different. The people of Egypt, I can enjoy them and stay in sin and treasures. That's what I can have my whole life. Or I can have the people of God. And I'll suffer. But I'll have greater riches. And I'm going to do it by faith. You see the difference? Yes or no? I'm liking the message. Rahab the harlot, in case we didn't get dirty enough for you. You mean even Rahab the prostitute. God would save. Let's do a quick, can we do another quick? I love these little sin question things I got going on. I'm not going to ask you how many are prostitutes, okay? (laughs) That's okay. I'm going to do it this way. How many would say, Pastor Gary, I've been a dirty man or a dirty woman. My hand's up. That's not all of us, but that's, that's some of us. Don't you, aren't you glad some of us made it too? Not everybody's Moses, are they? 
Oh, but he was a murderer, right? I'm finding God, God can take whoever we are and he can, he can use us. If we just don't do it our way, but we also see it his way. Well, Rahab was a harlot. The, this is Jericho and the battle's coming in. That city's going to be destroyed and she had a decision to make. And this harlot decided that she wasn't going to perish with everybody. Now, God used her, and she's even in the lineage of Christ. Did you just hear what I said? See, that's the thing you can't see. She saw just it was going to be curtains for her. But God had a bigger plan and did greater things. And that's what double vision can be. If we're not careful, we can just see it one way, and we don't see the big picture. By faith, the harlot Rahab didn't perish with them that didn't believe when she received the spies with peace. Okay? Rahab, what can you teach us, ma'am? Well, I put the word curtains up there because that's what it was. How many have ever been there in your life you felt like it was absolutely curtains in your life? Can I see your hand? (laughs) I mean, it was rough. She was going to perish. That's what she saw with her eye. She sees the, the troops gathering. It's, it's over. They're all going to die. But with the other eye, she saw there's a chance we can be delivered. That's what double vision will do for you. Amen. Say this out loud. When life looks like it's curtains, look for the window. Amen. And what did she do? She hung a scarlet thread out the what? Window. Amen. So, are, do you get the gist of the message today? Double vision. Is whining going to get it done? Yes or no? Is being kooky. And I'm going to say it again. Guys, all pain is not bad. And it doesn't matter. You might not like me anymore because I said that. All disease isn't bad. It's not. So many times it's those kind of things that puts us in the refining fire, gets us closer to the Lord. I'm telling you now, my God can do anything. My God can use anything, and he can do anything. Amen? So double vision. Are we done, Raj? Seeing with eyes of faith. Let's thank the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Boom! We're done. That was long. Come on. Let's stand on up. I didn't even feel good, but I got to feeling better. You know why? You know why I started feeling better? Because I knew what I was saying was the truth. And the truth sort of set me free this morning. What I said on that screen is not a lie. Got it? Yes or no? Matter of fact, a message like that, I'm undercutting myself. I'm undercutting myself. It wouldn't be so much better if I just said, you can get everything and you can have everything. Everything going to be great. Just give me all your money. It's going to be good. We're not playing that game. We're going to do the game of life. And we're going to walk with Christ. Wait a minute. What did he say? Follow me and carry your what? Did he say cross? It's what he said. No man putting his hand to the plow. Looking back. It's going to be fit for the kingdom. Buddy, that old plow can get rough, can't it? It can get hard. But just staying with it. Here's the beautiful thing. God will use you plowing, struggling. There'll be another fellow that's in the garden out there in the field with you, and he's hurting, and he'll see you still going, and you'll give him some faith and some hope and some encouragement. Amen? Hope you got the word today. I think you did. You look tired. I'd be tired too if I had to listen to me. Let's pray together. Lord, we love you. Lord, you know my heart. Lord, you know my ups and downs. You know, Lord, when I can be high and how I can be low. And Lord, you helped my vision today. When I was on this platform, Lord, I could see better today how you've been so good to me. How even though pain has come, I wouldn't want to rewrite 
my life. Because God, you showed up. And if I rewrote my life, you probably wouldn't be in it at all. Thank you for where I grew up. Thank you for how I was raised. Thank you for the trouble. Thank you, Lord, when Mama was hurt. You were there to usher her home. Thank you, Lord, when I was down, didn't think I could make it, and felt abandoned. That you brought a girl in my life named Kim that took a shine to me and had little girls that needed a daddy. Lord, you're a great God. Lord, if you're proud of me, then what more can a man want? That's what I want, Lord. I want you to be pleased with me, my life. Lord, I pray that for the folk here today. Lord, I pray many prayers are going up right now saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for getting me through this. Lord, help me with my best right now. Help fellowship always to be a place where where people can just, they can understand what we're talking about and it can be real and honest. Help folks today, I pray. Help those that are suffering disease today. Lord, my will, my will would be for them to get whole and better. But I submit my will to your will. Whatever comes our way, help us see with two eyes. In Jesus' name, amen. With heads bowed and I'm done, but we won't leave you without giving you the opportunity to receive Christ today. And so today, if you die and you don't know you'd go to heaven, guess what? You're not. Most likely, you're not. Or if you think, I'm going to go to heaven, I think so because I'm doing good works. You're not. Or I go to church or I gave money. Remember, pastor, I gave money. It's by the blood of Jesus Christ, God's only son, that we're saved. There is no other way. See, you see him with one eye, and that eye is blind as a bat. I'm going to ask you today to open up your eyes today and with sense realize church could never save you, you could never save you, a preacher could never save you, only Jesus can save you. He died on the cross, he rose from the dead. Believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Would you pray that with me right now? Would you tell him you got it? Would you tell him, thank you, Lord, you opened my eyes? Pray with me, would you, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know this whole earth is full of sinners. Every church is full of sinners. We're all undone. But I'm talking about me, Lord. I'm a sinner. Forgive me, Lord. And Lord, I want you to know. I want you to know. I know you didn't die in vain. You died for me. You rose for me. I believe in you today. I don't understand it all, but I understand this. My faith is in you, Jesus Christ. And I put it there, and I'm going to leave it there. Help me to follow you, Lord, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. With heads bowed, how many would say with a lifted hand, Pastor Gary, I said that prayer with you today. I meant it. I meant it. Wasn't, it wasn't fooling around. God bless you, man. God bless you today. Amen. Lord, bless us as we go our way. Help our young families have a good time down at Marco's. Help us be a blessing wherever we go. Help us see when we drive with both eyes. And help us go through life with double vision, Lord, with double vision. No matter what comes our way, help us be alert to your spirit to know that you can help us and you're going to help us through it. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's thank the Lord for his word. Thank you much, guys. God bless you. Have a great day. Boom. I liked it. I got a little testy in the message. God bless y'all. Be good. If I can help you, I'm here, but I'm going to get you sick. Just remember that. You're not coming close to me.